Hello everyone, today we're looking at computers and the decline in outside play. It's a lesson that's quite relevant to our lives living in the 21st century and the impact that technology has on our decisions whether we stay in or go out. And throughout the lesson today, just keep in mind uh, what you would prefer to do. Would you prefer to play indoors or outdoors? Think to yourself maybe five, six years ago. Uh, think of younger members in your family, whether they be siblings or cousins, and think about the decisions they're making. But also think about older people that you know, whether it's your teachers, your parents or grandparents, and the decisions that they might have made uh, when they were your age. Keywords, uh, outdoor play is pretty simple. It's games that are played outdoor, typically physical in nature. Uh, tag, football, cricket, any of these would classify as outdoor play. And the National Trust is an organization that was designed to preserve historic buildings, monuments, and areas in the countryside that were of great beauty in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It was founded in 1895, uh, incorporated by an Act of Parliament in 1907. Now, there are plenty of National Trust sites in and around the High Wycombe area. Some of them are free, some of them you pay for, uh, but National Trust does have some very affordable membership opportunities. If that's something that you're interested in doing, you can visit nationaltrust.co.uk for more information. So looking at indoor versus outdoor play, we need a little bit of context for this to make more sense to us. Now we know our three historical eras, we've got the medieval, early modern, and the modern era. And if we look back to the medieval era, we know that toys were very simple, they were homemade, they were often made out of materials that could be found or collected in the forest for free. Kids spent most of their time with their parents, and that was often watching their parents work. And that meant there was very little free time for kids to play. And since work was really hard and difficult, you didn't have a lot of energy after work to go and play as well. Now, by the early modern era, things will start to change a little bit. If you were incredibly wealthy, you could have some toys that were made by artisans. Uh, poor kids, they needed to use their imagination to have any kind of fun. Many kids had to help with the family economy and go to work with their parents, but most families were still quite poor and they still had very little free time for games of any sort. Now the big change is going to occur in the modern era, and specifically after the Industrial Revolution uh, around the 1850s to 1880s. There were some changes in law, and that meant that kids now had to go to school and not go to work with their parents. And industrialization led to factories producing toys at lower prices. Uh, when the prices were low, they became more affordable and people could actually purchase them. Work became less strenuous. Families had a lot more free time and money and energy as well. If we think in terms of modern context, a lot of the jobs that people do tend to be in an office setting that don't require a lot of physical exertion. There are still those jobs that exist, but many of the jobs that we do now require a lot less physical activity. Now, when the supply of toys goes up, the prices are generally going to go down. So these two eras are certainly going to be something that we're going to be looking at a little bit later, but we do need to keep in mind the modern era in terms of the way that it's going to encourage that indoor play versus outdoor play. Now, in the 1990s, uh, this was, of course, the style of clothing. Uh, and in 2010 up to 2020, we can see just how much things have changed in terms of play and entertainment and technology. So looking at indoor versus outdoor, uh, we're just going to look at what it was like inside and outside in each era. So starting off with the medieval era, outside was very much the same as it is today. Here, there's fresh air, there's nature, and it's free so long as you're on public land. Indoors was quite the opposite. It was very small and dirty. If you were a poor person in the medieval era, you probably lived in a one-room home, and you often shared your living space with the animals that you tended to. That might be chickens, it might be pigs, it might be sheep, and they would live indoors with you at night to keep safe. Now, there was no electricity, 
or no internal plumbing. Now, the early modern era, outside again, isn't going to change a whole lot, but there will be some purpose-built venues, uh, such as lawn billiards or tennis courts were being constructed for those sports to be played. Homes remain generally the same size and build quality, uh, slightly more comfortable than the medieval era, but still no electricity or no indoor plumbing. Now, again, the modern era is going to be a time of great change. So even though outdoor is, is remaining very similar, uh, indoors has changed a lot. Homes have become much more comfortable and much larger, and we now have electricity and indoor plumbing. Now, electricity and indoor plumbing will become quite popular in the early 1900s. And that's really key to understand why uh, indoor play is becoming more popular than outdoor play. Now, children growing up in the 1970s and 1980s enjoyed roughly two hours a week um, of outside play and about nine hours at the weekend. Youngsters uh, today, they on average spend just over an hour each weekday and less than five hours at the weekend. Now, 43% of parents, they admit that they rely on schools to ensure that their children spend enough time outdoors. And the reasons given for a lack of outdoor play uh, often were the attraction of computer games and the increased pressure to complete homework, but also the lack of green space, bad weather, and above all, the fear for children's safety. Now, psychologists also argue that play is an essential part of a child's life. It's vital for enjoyment and for social, emotional, intellectual, and physical development. We know that after you play a sport or you go to PE, often we just feel better about ourselves. Physical activity releases endorphins, which makes us feel good. The National Trust, they surveyed 1,000 parents with children aged 4 to 14, 80% of those said, it's really important that my child knows how to use modern technology, but nearly all of them, 98% in total, thought it's very important that their child has a strong connection with nature. Uh, now, Rally Ritchie, he's the man here on the right-hand side. He's one of the stars of Game of Thrones. He joined a campaign with the National Trust where he was encouraging kids to pick up a stick and play a make-believe game with it. So whether they pretend that stick is a sword or a wizard's wand, uh, just to get back to the roots of nature and get back to outdoor play. Now, there was another attempt by uh, Pokemon to actually get indoor and outdoor play merging together. Uh, this was a really popular smartphone game, started about 2013, 2014. Uh, where you would go outside and you would actually try to hunt virtual Pokemon. They were trying to use video games to get kids back into outdoor play. Chapter 3. The Growth of Leisure from 1900 to the Present Day When we think of leisure in the 20th century, we have so many options to choose from. Do you want to go to the cinema? 10-pin bowling, out for a meal, laser quest, or even ice skating. There are so many clubs, sporting activities, and hobbies to choose from that everybody's tastes are pretty much catered for. Music and reading have increased in popularity, and even shopping is seen as an enjoyable form of leisure today. But it has taken a long time for leisure to change in Great Britain. During the 20th century, there was a massive increase in the leisure opportunities made available in Great Britain. This was mainly made possible by people working less hours during the week and an increase in disposable income. Money that was now not needed for bills and food could be spent on more enjoyable things. As the British population became richer, people demanded greater leisure opportunities and places where they could relax. This led to an increase in sports centres, theatres, social clubs and even church-led activities. The 20th century truly saw a leisure revolution across all of Great Britain. The government was encouraged to provide British people with leisure facilities. At the start of the 20th century, there was an increased demand in Great Britain for public parks, neighbourhood allotments and open spaces that people could rest and relax in. Towns were also encouraged to build places of cultural interest such as free public libraries, now that people had more time to read, and free museums. Church community centres and town halls also gave special interest groups places to meet regularly and enjoy similar hobbies. Healthier activities were not ignored either. 
Indoor and outdoor public swimming pools were constructed, as well as sports centres and sports pitches where local football, rugby and athletic clubs could meet and enjoy competing with each other. Many of these activities were based on a local level, but improvements in both transport and technology encouraged more national leisure activities to take place. A greater use of cars, trains and buses meant that people could travel further afield to enjoy leisure activities, such as football matches and walking in the Welsh and Yorkshire hills. The 20th century also saw the arrival of modern-day cinemas, with tickets being inexpensive enough for many people to enjoy. Theatres also began to produce more productions and shows that toured across the country bringing cultural opportunities to the masses. Once World War II ended, and Great Britain settled down into post-war rebuilding, leisure was redefined again. The 1960s saw the emergence of youth culture and new leisure opportunities needed to be developed for teenagers who had more disposable income to spend. Suddenly, Great Britain had a need for roller discos, new cafes, music concerts and fashion. Towards the end of the late 20th century, many of the new leisure opportunities being developed were geared towards home-based recreation. These included televisions, VHS players, radios and home computers. Video rental shops shot up around the country and a night in was suddenly the new night out as it became cheaper to watch films at home. Television became a vitally important form of leisure and the 1970s saw many new cult television shows developed such as The Prisoner and The Avengers as well as American imports such as Starsky and Hutch hitting the small screens all around Great Britain. As we reach the modern day, computers, console stations and interactive game playing have taken over as so many of the leisure activities enjoyed by the young and old alike. People spend hours on the internet, on social networking sites such as Facebook and MSN Messenger, and a night in nowadays can involve a group of people playing an interactive computer game on the living room television. Quite surprisingly, alongside the rise of computer games and the internet, the 21st century has also seen an increase in fitness and leisure activities, with both the general public and government pushing for more sports clubs and gyms to be set up. However, the 21st century has also seen an increase in the levels of obesity. As we have considered, leisure has changed during this time to fit the needs of a more demanding British population. Here we can see a collection of uh, newspaper headlines over the last few years. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have newspaper headings that are uh, quite against video games and showing how damaging they can be to children. And on the right-hand side, we have some that are in favor of video games, saying that they can improve uh, intelligence and social skills. But we have to go back to what we know. And we know that in the medieval and early modern era, Outdoor play was quite common simply because being inside wasn't very nice. Your house was small, it was dirty, it was smelly, and you would do just about anything you could to get out of the house. But in the 1970s and 1980s, we saw a rise in indoor play, and we need to link this to the changes that were taking place in terms of video games, internet access, the home theatre. And we can use these to explain why indoor play has become much more popular uh, in the last 30 years than it was in the 1950s and 60s. And in doing so, we can think back to our own lives and we can think of what we would prefer to do. If it's a nice sunny day outside, do we want to get on the PlayStation and play a video game with one of our friends? Or do we want to go outside and play some football? And now it's time for our bonus facts. Nintendo, they had an attempt at getting indoor play uh, to be a bit more physical, and that was with the Nintendo Wii. Uh, this came out a long time ago, uh, and at first it wasn't very successful. There were a lot of instances where people were actually smashing their TVs unintentionally because they were throwing the handheld device uh, and it was slipping on their hands and falling. We have other examples where people, this was doing the ski jumping, uh, he fell off of the Wii Fit board, knocked over his TV, and broke it. And this actually led Nintendo to releasing a, a wrist strap specifically for the Wii Remote uh, with instructions that again would show people how to use it safely.
Some kids really, really like being indoors, and we're going to link this back to a 2017 study uh, where some parents admitted that their children spend just half an hour each day outside, which is less than a prison inmate would receive. Now, most prisons in the world uh, will give all of their inmates at least one hour of exercise outside per day. And that's because they've understood that outdoor activity is good for not only our physical health, but our mental health. Now, studies have shown that a major factor that encourages young people to choose to stay indoors is their access to electronic technology and Wi-Fi. Okay, that's it for today. Please have a look on Show My Homework and complete the quiz along with any other tasks set by your teacher.